So we're going to make a start. I'm going to talk to you about leverets, which are young hares. And these are brown hares uh, that we have here. And uh, absolutely fabulous sort of sightings we've had recently of a young leveret in the gallery car park. And we'll just show you uh, a shot of this one. So this is a young leveret that was born here. Uh, and believe it or not, this has survived some of the coldest weather that we've had in years. So this was born uh, in that snowy weather we had a few weeks ago, uh, which is quite incredible. Tiny, tiny little leveret has survived that weather down to below minus 10 several nights here uh, and heavy snow for about nine days. So uh, superb. So it obviously got himself tucked away somewhere, but there you can see a lovely little little stretch with that leveret. Uh, so what we're going to start with first, difference between a rabbit and a hare, I think. First, we'll have a look at that. So uh, here we have same camera, same view. We've got a rabbit there on the uh, left-hand side and a brown hare on the right-hand side. So the size difference is absolutely considerable. They're much, much bigger uh, size between them. Uh, so that's a rabbit there, much greyer, and then the uh, hare on the right Superb. Yes, that shows the difference. The rabbits live underground and the hares live on the surface the whole year round, no matter what the weather. The only exception to that is when the leverets are young. I've some, found them sometimes tucked away under things, under buildings, um, under piles of wood, and sometimes they'll even go down little holes to keep safe as well. Uh, but we have the hare here actually gives birth. Nearly every year we have hares in the gallery car park or in the garden uh, giving birth and these are really secretive and really difficult to find these but uh, last year I was lucky enough to find these two little characters just after a female had fed them and I followed their story. I put in about 49 days uh, just to this one story last year which was shown on the BBC One show and uh, uh, just incredible. So here they are, they're about a day old at this stage and this is one of the most gorgeous magic moments I've ever captured on camera. The female hare coming back at night just once a day to feed these tiny little leverets and these are wee wee little things just uh, four inches long. Superb. Yes, that's the female hare and uh, we think it's now the same female hair that we've got this year, but this was shot last last year, you can see. Uh, I'm actually in the background. You can see a small little light in the gallery courtyard, and the female hair came and fed this little leveret every single night, um, at about uh, in between 9 and 10 at night, every single evening, which was absolutely fabulous thing to see. Superb. It took a lot of time and a lot of effort to get these incredible shots. But she actually fed it there out in the open, which was fabulous to see. And uh, and she's doing it again. We think it's the same female hair, exact same behavior. I actually drove down the hill the other day and managed to see uh, this little leveret uh, feeding uh, the hair being fed by the leveret there right in front of me as I as turned the engine off. So she was very used to uh, the cars and the vehicles. So I presume it is the same leveret. So what we're going to hit with next, Will? Well, the way that you've been now finding this leveret. Oh, yeah. So this is this year's leveret and how I've managed to find it. So I just chanced upon seeing it. The female hare came down into the gallery car park one day uh, as I was coming back down from Ashwood, um, just around about half six in the evening, just as it was getting dark. And I saw her coming into the gallery car park. So I'm just going to take you through a little video of how then I spot this leveret. I've been following a female hare and her tiny leveret and she's hiding it in the gallery car park here, right on the banks. And life has become much easier now. I've got this Pulsar thermal imaging camera that I've borrowed and I can now spot the leveret. This is absolutely crazy. Within a few seconds I've spotted the leveret. This would normally take me ages looking really, really carefully. And this has just picked it out, glowing bright white. This thing's absolutely incredible, but now I've found it, I'm going to sneak in with the pocket too and get some really close up footage of the leveret as it rests. Mm. 
Yes, yeah, so that's me filming the. Uh, I was busy watching. <laughs> uh, that's me filming the uh, lever, and it just shows what's possible if you move really slowly. Uh, this lever, it's used to me filming it now, and it knows I'm not a danger. Uh, but just creeping in really quietly, uh, and the hare will just crouch, uh, so trying to avoid being seen. Uh, but I obviously know where it is, and as long as I move slowly, I can get really close and get some absolutely fabulous footage of this lever. So here we have the leveret grooming itself, and this is totally secret behavior that we wouldn't really normally get to see this close. When we approach a leveret close, it just stays very, very still, uh, crouches down, and doesn't want to be seen. But this was just after a tiny little bit of fine rain. It's then grooming itself. I nearly brought the camera back in, thinking it was going to get wet. Uh, but instead, I just popped a little bit of material around it, and... Uh, and just got this, oh, melts your heart. <laughs> Look at it. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, each time I watch it, I just think uh, we can use the word cute with this. We shouldn't do it with wildlife, but that is really cute. Um, just superb little leveret. And this is something we would never see. So I set the camera going and then just walk away or just stand back 30 meters so I can still control the camera with its Wi-Fi. So that's the Osmo Pocket 2 if anyone's interested in the technical side of things. Absolutely great little bit of kit. So yeah, this is more shots with it. So I'll leave it filming for an hour or so and then I'll reposition it to try and get different sort of shots. Uh, some wider ones, tighter ones. Uh, and it really surprised me a few times it would actually start doing this unusual behavior when I was actually there in front of it. It got so used to me. But this is a little lever it's snoozing off, just not enough to sleep. Just fabulous stuff. And that's the road just behind the lever, which is always a little bit of a worry for me. This is a magical moment. He's just uh, dozing off. You see his ears going back. There he's going. He's going. He's nearly gone. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, he just remembered this being filmed. So uh, he's popped his head back up. But that's a little lever waiting for the female hare to come on and come in, in the evening to uh, feed it. Uh, it would often then change positions just before uh, sh the female came in and actually wait underneath the cars, uh, sheltering from any of the owls around. Uh, but that's just great stuff. Is that the end of the video as well? That's the end of your videos. We're gonna next week. We're gonna give you a blockbuster story of this leveret uh, and last year's leverets, and uh, put it together into a nice short film for you. And it's just gonna be so exciting and so special to share you share that with you. It's uh, some of the most proud footage I've had. I've seen leverets being uh, fed by the parents many a times, but just being able to film it is uh, that's trying to get to the next level. And uh, yeah, I managed it last year. Still getting more shots this year to fill the story in, but it's just uh, remarkable. This is happening right next to our cars in the gallery car park, which is, uh, you know, some days it's a busy place for deliveries and things, and this little lever, it just crouches there. Fabulous stuff. So we'll take a few questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one comes from the Scarecrow Rejects on mm -hmm. Twitter. How fast is a hair? Oh, hares are really fast. Uh, they're 45 kilometers an hour. Um, they can run, so that's, uh, yeah, it's sipping along fast. Um, well, the next question comes from a Horse Range. Uh, it says, I know rabbit kits are hard to keep alive in Foster. A lever it is hard to keep as well. Yes, simple answer, yes, they're very difficult. Uh, they can be doing really, really well. I mean, the idea of anyone rescuing a, a lever is... is uh, is bordering on ridiculous unless a cat's bringing it in. If you find a leveret in a hedgerow in a field, you're not rescuing it, you're taking it from the wild. It's not It's not a rescue mission. These leverets are left by the parents all day and she just comes and feeds them for around about eight minutes to 12 minutes. So uh, any rescue of leverets is, uh, unless a cat's brought it in or a dog's uh, picked it up, uh, it, it's not a rescue. It's a, it's a, it's a rob from the wild. I'm abducted, afraid. Yeah. yeah, abducted leverets. So uh, there is a lot of places that res rescue leverets and take them in, uh, but all those leverets, uh, nearly all of them, should be just left in the wild uh, where they actually belong. Sandra Stewart on YouTube is asking, um, as compared to rabbits, leverets can live 
own, on their own shortly after birth. In general, are the leverets cared for for any period of time? Oh, the, the, the care is just literally being fed and then uh, and then a quick groom round the back end. Uh, so that that is literally um, that that's the care that they have. So it's a technique that uh, is used by the hare that these uh, they have less young, more developed young. Uh, their eyes are open when they're born, and uh, they're more developed, but there's less of them uh, in the litter. So three is quite common, two, and sometimes even one uh, leveret. So, uh, yes, yeah, so they, they, they come out more developed, they live on top, but their care is absolutely minimal. Minimal. Uh, the longest, I think we saw the female hair with a leveret was uh, 12 minutes, 8 minutes is normal. Uh, and the only time we saw which we'll tell you about in the story next week. The only time the, lever, the female hare stayed longer is when she actually lost one of the uh, leverets, maybe to a predator, and then she kept coming back looking for it, and the other, the le remaining leveret kept uh, joining the female, and that was the only time for two nights that we saw the female of the hare for about 45 minutes uh, as she tried finding the missing uh, leveret, which had... Uh, yeah, it had been had by one of the predators here, maybe the stoats, maybe the owls. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's just, that's the leveret life, you know, it's uh, minimal contact, but it seems to work, you know, uh, the hares do well in this area. Jenny C is asking, what are the risks for leverets left alone uh, during the day from predators? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there's, uh, there's many uh, risks for predators from uh, domestic cats to feral cats to stoats, weasels, uh, buzzards, harriers, kestrels, <laughs> tawny owls. Uh, we've even managed to film the tawny owl used to, and I've seen it several times, that a tawny owl will shadow an uh, adult hare at dusk, uh, and that's because the tawny owl knows probably it's going to feed its leverets. Uh, so our tawny owl here, Bomber, would shadow that female hare. And we've got some pretty dramatic footage to share with you uh, next week uh, where the female hare actually chases Bomber away. Uh, and this is something I saw a few times. We've managed to capture it on film uh, just once. Uh, Pam Co on Facebook is asking, what is the average lifespan and how often do they breed each year? Oh, they breed. They breed uh, maybe three, four times a year, uh, brown hares do. So they start very early in the year. Uh, so that leveret was born in February. February. Yeah, so it was born in February, but they'll have three to four uh, sessions of breeding. Uh, so the female hare is probably pregnant now, and she'll give birth again. And age-wise, I don't know exactly, but maybe five, six, seven years. Um, I haven't got that in my head at the moment. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just remarkable things, really, how they managed to bring these little leverets up just out in the open and that cold weather that we had was just astonishing that it survived through that just got a final question from pao on twitter is it common to find hares in city center areas i think i've seen one in an urban area before it was definitely a hare and not a rabbit yeah there's certain areas i think there's um some uh, um graveyards um where there's where there's quite renowned for hares in this country i don't know where that is um but yeah slightly urban they don't like dogs uh um, so there's a possibility of fringes of urban areas and parks and things. Golf courses, hares love golf courses. They feel very safe there and they become uh, quite approachable. Um, so, uh, yeah, so they can become slightly urbanized, but not really urbanized uh, like rabbits can. So that's all the questions we've got yeah. time for today. Right then, well, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll show you that video we're going to do next week. Will's excited about it. I'm excited about it. And it's going to be fabulous.